are you new to ACCA or do you just need a bit more information about it? ACCA can be really confusing and myself being an ACCA student, I thought it would be good to make a video that actually explains how the ACCA qualification works. So how this video is going to be structured is first I'm going to be going through the foundations of ACCA. Like how is this whole qualification structured? Secondly, I'm going to be going through how the exemptions work. How did I get my exemptions and so forth. And then lastly, I'm going to be going through the study resources I personally, with my experience, think you should use. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be answering like frequently asked questions that I usually get about the ACCA qualification. So for those of you who are new, I'm Conrad and I'm an ACCA member living in Botswana. And my goal with this channel is to give you the skills, the tools and the resources to be able to pass ACCA. So without further ado, let's get into it. So ACCA is structured like in a three-part series where with the first level obviously you have to pass through the first level to get to the second level and then obviously the second level to the third level but the first level is called the applied knowledge level. Now the applied knowledge level is where you're doing the basics of the ACCA framework. This is where you're learning your basis in financial accounting, management accounting, and then there's also another subject called business and technology. Now what sets the applied knowledge level, apart from the applied skills and strategic professional levels, is that the exams are structured differently. Now later in the qualification, when you are starting to become more advanced, your exams are only every three months, which that means is that every three months, you are able to write an exam. March sitting, June sitting, September sitting, and then December sitting. Now with these three levels, and then also one subject in the applied skills level, you are basically available to write your exam anytime on your computer, a computer based exam. And then you have two hours to complete this exam. It's more or less structured by your pace. You can do them everything within a week, or you can decide to do it within a year or two years, like most people probably do. Now, the second level is where things get a bit more challenging, and this is the applied skills level. Now, like I mentioned in the applied knowledge level, there is one subject here that doesn't belong, and that is the taxation module. The taxation module also is two hours, and you can write it whenever you feel like writing it. Now we move to a bit more of the meatier subjects, right? So these are subjects that I did in my third year because my, basically I studied an accounting degree before ACCA, so I got exemptions, which we'll talk about later in the video. And these subjects are a lot in line with my third year subjects, a bit more difficult in some areas and a bit more in depth. But these are the places where there's a bit more meat around the subjects. And these four are financial reporting, financial management, performance management, which is personally a dip my favorite but a difficult one and then the last one is audit and assurance now these exams you book beforehand and they are set every three months which i mentioned now in the applied skills level and these basically have a, a three hour exam sitting and their pass rates hover between 40 and 50 percent that means that if there's 11 people or 10 people writing in the class only four of them will pass where i am currently in this process is i'm doing my last applied skills level then after the applied skills level, we have our ethics and professional skills module. Well, this is like more like a course. It's not part like an exam that you have to write, but it's more like a course that you have to work through step by step by step. And then at the end, just write like a quick quiz. But the ethics and professional skills module, well, I can tell you in detail now about it because I'm busy doing it at the moment. This is more a thing of where you learn where et what ethics is, what professionalism is as an accountant in the working area. They put you through some practical examples and you have to obviously apply your knowledge to try and figure out these practical examples. And then also they do things like data analytics, which is a relatively new thing I think they put into the module. And then I think also continuous learning and that type of stuff is in there as well. So it's a very practical course. I could rather call it a course that you have to do on top of it. But you do get a certificate when you complete this course. It does help a bit with the employability aspect of things. And the last level, this is now the most trickiest level, is the strategic professional level. There are two essential modules for this, which means that they are compulsory. And that is strategic business leader and strategic business reporting. Now, I haven't done these yet, but I am going to do them next year, March, which is in the next six months. And in the other four exams, you can now pick and choose what you want to specialize in. So this is more, I think, something that you look back in retrospect of what subjects that I enjoy, what industry do I want to work in? Uh, then you just ask yourself these type of questions, a bit of, a bit of introspection, a fancy word there. 
and then you decide, listen, do I want to go, do I want to go with financial management? There's advanced financial management, advanced performance management, advanced auditing and assurance, which is the most difficult of the four. And then the last subject is advanced taxation. Now, personally, I think I'm going to go with the management accounting route, which is the advanced performance management and then also maybe doing the advanced audit and assurance because with the advanced audit and assurance you learn a lot of internal controls within the business and how the business is supposed to operate which gives you a good guideline of what can be changed in the business to make it more streamlined and you know just overall just make it a better business so I know this is a lot to digest right it is a lot to digest but there's one more thing that you guys need to take into consideration and that is actually something I get asked a lot in my comment section is should I work while I'm busy studying? Well, to become an ACCA member, there's a requirement that you need three years of relevant practical experience. Now, relevant means is that it is somewhat in an accounting or financial role within an organization. They mentioned that you can work for a church or that you can work for, in my case, I'm working for a primary school, like a, prim a school group. So as long as it is relevant to your studying, then ACCA will approve it. So with the PER, there's a specific dashboard that you get which has specific objectives with regards to, to you know how to set up a budget. Then you have to give a practical example of when you set up a budget. There are things like just applying all of this that you've learned in a practical way. And they ask you, how did you apply it in a practical way? And then after you've done all of those things, then you are an ACCA member and I congratulate you because it is a lot of work. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a lot of work. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you guys about what exemptions I got. Because people have a big misunderstanding of the exemptions that you can get in this whole process. Now, I got six exemptions up until the applied skills level. And I think the last exemption that I got, the only two that I didn't get was audit and assurance and then performance management. Those are the only two that I didn't get. So those two I did now in the last two exams. And getting an exemption is actually really easy. Uh, all that you go and do is when you apply on the ACCA website and you've got a degree or something that you did prior, let's say you did a diploma. I personally did a bachelor's of accounting degree. Wait, let me show you guys. I hope it doesn't reflect, yeah? But I got a bachelor of accounting, commerce in accounting. And this was able to give me uh, like only six exemptions. So it depends really on what you did and then if your university is recognized by CCA. But you just go through a process, it takes like 10 minutes, step by step you upload your transcripts and your ID and just those type of documents. And then like in a, it's quite fast, like a week or two, they'll tell you, okay, you got these exemptions. That means that you don't have to write those specific subjects. You can move on to the next one. So just to be a good person that I always am, I'm gonna leave a link to a video that about exemptions. And then also I'm gonna leave a link to the exemptions um, application center where you can actually test what exemptions you'll get. ACC actually has this thing where you test and then you can tell you, listen, you got this, you put in your specific degree that you got um, and the requirements that they have. And then they tell you, okay, you uh, qualify for six exemptions, five exemptions, you need to do these subjects. And that is relatively accurate. Now, personally, this is one of the areas where I got confused a lot uh, because I thought you needed to go through a university in your local area to be able to study ACCA. And what happened was that I actually enrolled um, to do ACCA through a local university. I won't name which one, obviously, but I ended up paying so much money, like a ton of money to just use a platform like that it's literally BPP, it's just use BPP and they were regarded as my host and I paid them like nearly double for that. So just to clarify things, you guys don't need to go to study through university. There's lots of sites like BPP, Kaplan and then also um, I'm using Learn Signal, which is relatively good. So to save you guys a headache, I'm going to give you guys three recommended learning paths that you guys can do. The first one is if you're relatively new and you work better with people one-on-one -on -one explaining things to you, especially in the foundation phase where you're building your knowledge and when you need to ask a lot of questions, I would recommend getting a personal tutor or maybe going to a university that actually runs through the classes. This just because the reason is because you can interact with someone and because you can ask them questions if you don't understand something. Because 
Like they always say, your foundation is the most important. If your foundation is strong of the accounting knowledge, then you'll progress and you can just build on that. The second one is Learn Signal, which I mentioned now. They are quite good. I, re I really enjoy them. And they are basically like a subscription based platform. I think if I have to be real with you guys, the only thing that I don't like about them is that their notes aren't really in depth. Like their notes are all over the place. But you can print them, which is the nice thing that I like. But I'll definitely be making like a review of Learn Signal in the future. Okay, and the third and last one is BPP. I use them for my performance management. Their notes are like amazing. Like it's literally books that they give you guys for free with it. And I think you guys do get video, you do get videos as well. But the video's qualities aren't that good. Like if I have to be honest, they like recorded badly and stuff. And me being like a YouTuber, <laughs> I like good recorded, like well recorded stuff and well put together stuff. BBP is just a bit more expensive, but I can root for them because I use their product and I think it's genuinely, I think it's a good product. So just for a benefit for those of you guys who stuck around to the end of the video, I'm gonna be answering some frequently asked questions. Now, I don't know if you guys think I must make a video about this where I actually answer a lot of these questions, but here are some of them that I get a lot um, in my comment sections regarding like the foundation phase of ACCA. First one, should you work while you're studying? Okay, the answer for this is yes, uh, because it takes a long time to get your work experience. And you don't wanna be first like spending three years on studying and then you start doing your work experience. You know, then you're gonna extend your studying window for much longer, let's say it's six years which is unnecessary because a core belief that I have is that, um, you know, you can manage a lot of things. No one, if someone tells me, listen, I don't have time, then I'll tell them, just listen, how much time do you spend on your phone per day? Usually it's like two or three hours. That three hours you could use for something productive. Now, I'm not saying that you should not be on your phone or anything, but my point is just that you can balance things out. You can, it's good to work and then to apply your, your, your knowledge that you are busy learning in your work as well. And that just gives you so, so much more of an advantage to a potential employer because work experience, no matter what anyone tells you, any work experience is valuable. Okay, can I complete this qualification within two years? No, <laughs> because, okay, I'm just gonna get to the gist of it. You need three years practical experience and without three years of, of practical experience, you can't, you, you need three years, boom. What strategic professional exam should I choose? Now, you shouldn't be worrying about strategic professional exams yet because you're just in the foundation phase. However, if you are in the later phases, applied skills, maybe reaching the end of that, then I think it should be more of a thing of asking yourself, what do you enjoy and what industry do you see yourself working in the future? But I would say it's just a thing of preference and asking yourself, doing a bit of questioning, journaling, and asking yourself, should I go into this industry or should I go into that industry? And then lastly, I think this one is very subjective, but are exams difficult? Now, to me, compared to my university degree that I got, these exams aren't really that difficult. I think mainly because of the reason, because they're online and like most of the questions you get is like A, B, C, D type of questions at the beginning. And I feel if you, if you just, you have a 25%, let's say there's four options, you have a 25% chance of getting one right. Whereas with a practical exam, you have to write down all your answers. You know, you actually need to know your work. So I wouldn't say it is as difficult as like a university degree where you have to sit down and write everything. But it is still challenging. I mean, the pass rate speaks for itself. Some subjects go to 40%, some to 45. Others like advanced audit and assurance go to 30, 32%. So it really dep depends on the subject. But like I say, it's a bit, a bit easier. I don't think you need to stress yourself too much, okay? So that means is that like, there's a lot of things you need to take into consideration when you want to do ACCA. And five things I wish I knew before like starting ACCA, I actually made a video about that and I'm gonna link it up here for you guys who wanna go watch it. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.